Hello, in this SFML video, we're going to be covering transformations. Transformations come in three different forms. Positioning, which is also known as translation. So if you hear translation, it's just setting the position. You have rotation, which well, rotates it, you apply a certain angle. And scaling, which just stretches it and squashes your object. We'll also be covering origins as well, which actually play a part in all of these transformations because up till now we've created sprites shapes text and they've all been pretty much the same in that they've been positioned in the top left hand corner in a game everything isn't positioned in one place there's things in different places there's things with different rotations especially let's say if you've got character items and maybe something moving around you have stuff scaling as well based on different game events so we need to be able to set these properties the first one we're going to look at is positioning which again is also known as translation to set the position you do sprite dot though i'm applying it to a sprite you can apply it to a shape or a text item the code is exactly the same so i won't obviously be doing it again for shapes and text items so if we do sprite dot set position and if you notice there's two different ways you can do it you can either do a method that takes in two float values which is the x and y position or you can do one which uses a sfml vector of two floats which is also constructed using two x and y float values i'm going to use this method just so you are aware of how to use it because the other one is just two parameters that are passed in separated by a comma so in here you would just do sf colon colon vector 2f and in here you pass in the new position so i'm actually going to center it in the screen so if you look the screen width is 640 screen height is 480 so the center is 320 by 240 if we run this now we will get our item centered my thinking it hasn't centered it it has the only problem is or i want to say a problem by default the origin of our item is the top left hand corner so that's what the transformations will be applied around we'll be covering later in this video how to change the origin and we'll cover how to change it to something a bit more useful that's what i would say that's probably the best way to put it and this has positioned it in the center of our screen and it's positioned the top left corner of the item hence why it's sort of going outwards like so the next thing you can do is move an item because this explicitly sets the position if i were to do this for example and set this to zero this essentially overrides the previous method and the y value is now zero but perhaps we want to just move it according to its current position so we could do sprite dot move and again it takes either two float values or a vector value and use the vector value just so you're familiar with how to use vectors and if i were to put a value of 50 and 0 what this does is it moves it by 50 pixels to the right aka in the x-axis negative would move it to the left and 0 pixels in the y-axis so the new position would be 370 and 240 because i've applied 0 in the y-axis the 240 is not affected so if i run this now we get our brick image which is slightly moved to the right by 50 pixels and if let's say you apply 20 in here it moves it down by 20 pixels if you apply negative it moves it up by 20 pixels so that's how you move items and then finally let's show you how you can actually retrieve the sprites position so if i do sprite dot get position and this returns a vector 2f it's a bit meaningless at the moment so let's assign it to a variable so if we do sf vector 2f and i'm going to call this position equal to sprite dot get position and if we ever want to use this position we just do position dot x and position dot y so that gets the x and y values i'm going to comment this out because we won't be using it 
but just wanted to show you so you was aware of how to actually get the position and not just set it. So now let's cover rotation. To rotate your item, you do sprite.set rotation. Then now you apply a angle for it to rotate. It rotates along the clockwise direction. So if I were to apply 45, this will rotate it 45 degrees clockwise. So if we just run it, it's rotated it 45 degrees clockwise. I'm actually going to comment this out. So it's back in the center of the screen. And again, it's rotated fine, but it's rotated it around the origin, which happens to be in the top left hand corner of the item and not in the center. But we'll look at origin later in this video. So that's the rotation done. But that just explicitly sets the rotation. So if I were to do set rotation 55, this will just set the rotation to 55 but what if we wanted to let's say add 10 onto maybe after every single frame we are rotating it by let's say 10 degrees we can't just do 10 because this will overwrite the current rotation and set it to 10 degrees but what you can do if you just want to rotate it relative to its current rotation you do dot rotate provide an angle which i'm going to put 10 and this will rotate it by 10 degrees according to its current rotation, which is 45, its new rotation is 55. And to actually retrieve the rotation, you just do sprite.getRotation. And as it just takes a float value, it just returns a float value. And you can use this wherever you want if you need to. So that's rotation handled. In terms of scaling, very similar process. You just do sprite dot set scale again you can provide either two float values separated by a comma or a vector 2f it's going to do a sf vector 2f and for this you just specify how much you what you want the scale to be so i'm going to put 1.0f in the x-axis so that means the x scale will remain at what the original size of the image was and if i want to do 2.0f in the y-axis what this will do is actually stretch it in the y-axis sort of hard to see so i'm going to get rid of all rotation and i'm going to get rid of all position code as well just by commenting it out and if we run it it'll be in the top left hand corner but in the x-axis it hasn't been stretched but in the y-axis it has and you could apply something like 0.5f as well if you want to make it smaller if you want to set the scale according to the current scale, what you can do is sprite.scale. Again, you can either specify two different values or a SF vector 2F. I'll do SF vector 2F. And if let's say we specify 0.5F and 0.5F, what this does, it actually scales the current scale value. So the scale will apply 0.5F to this, so this becomes 0.5. You apply 0.5 to this, because that's the current Y scale, and this will become one, instead of setting it to 0.5 and 0.5 respectively. So if you run this, we'll get a scale of 0.5 in the X axis and 1.0 in the y-axis so that's how you scale items and again it's relative to the actual origin as well if the origin was in the center you would sort of scale outwards so that's something to bear in mind but we'll be covering scaling very soon so if you want to actually retrieve a scale value you just do sf vector 2f and i'm going to call it scale assign it to the value of sprite.get scale and to get a x or y scale you do scale dot x and scale dot y like so so that's how you retrieve scale values we don't need it so i'll just comment it out, comment it out and now finally let's get on to origin so the origin if we want to position it let's say in the center so what we had before was this right here 
So let's just do set position. Let's rerun this. We ideally want this to be in the center, but what we, what we want is the actual item itself to be in the center as well. So we need to set the origin to the center of the item, which is the sprite. So we do sprite.set origin. And again, you can either pass into float values or a vector 2f. I'm going to do vector 2f, ff, vector 2f. And in here, you just specify the, the actual origin. So what I'm actually going to do is above here is get the current size of our sprite. To do that, you do ff rect and you specify float for the type and size, that's what I'm gonna call it, sprite.get. There's local bounds and then there's global bounds. Local bounds is just the original sort of size, the, the local size of the item. Global bounds has stuff like transformations, apply to it, so if it's changed size, this is what you would want. So global bounds, so this essentially gets a rectangle of our sprite, so the rectangle around our sprite. And from here, what we can actually do is size.width. So this is the width of our sprite. And because we want to center it in the X and Y axis, we just divide by two, and we just do size.height, divide by two as well. If we run this now, what we'll get is our item in the middle because the actual origin was here, hence when we actually moved the item, the origin moved to here and the actual item was positioned like so. If I were to just comment out the set position code, run this again, what we'll get is something slightly different to what we originally have had and that is because we set the origin, so the actual center of the item was at 0, 0 and not the top left. So that's how you set the origin and let me show you how this factors in when rotated. So if I add the position back, let me just show you what it looks like. So it's in your mind. So we're going to rotate this particular item. So if we set the rotation to 45 degrees, what it should do is rotate around this item and it should still be centered. If we run this, let's see what result we get. And that hasn't quite rotated around the center. And you might be thinking, why is that? We set the origin. But when we actually applied the rotation, the origin was zero, zero. So it rotated around the origin at this particular moment in time. And then the origin was only set at a later date. So this didn't affect it. So if we comment this out, copy and paste this, so it's below here. And if we run it now, the actual rotation will take into, it will factor in the new origin. And let's say if we were to do sprite.set scale. And if let's say I were to do SF vector 2F, and I'm just gonna specify 2.0F, 1.25F, run that now. So this will scale it according to the origin. So it sort of scaled it outwards instead of just sort of scaling it away from the top left so that's how you handle origin that's how you handle translation aka positioning rotation and scaling just one little note on origin the preferred method for me and i know a lot of other developers and quite a lot of game engines is to have the actual origin at, at the center of the item it just makes things easy that way but the biggest thing to note is when dealing with origin keep it consistent throughout your application because if you don't if you have some items with the top left at the origin some with the center and maybe some some other random position what you'll have is a mismatch and when you're trying to position stuff and move stuff around it just won't look right and behave the way you want it to because of a mismatch in the origin so just make sure you keep the origin consistent that's the biggest thing my recommendation is to have in the center of the object but that's totally up to you 
That's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on my educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There'll be a link in the description along with a link to the source code from this video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.